First, I want to say thank you, uh, Christine and uh, Megan, for opening this um, topic mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. polyamory. This is something I I love to learn a lot because I encountered this um, a few years ago, and last time when I called in, um, Christine, Doctor Ray helped me understand a bit. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, you know the like intellectual explanation, I understand, but I guess like um, I'm trying to understand more like from an emotional perspective, because um, so like uh, for Lily, I want I want to ask you, um, like, are you able to like, for example, in in my case, um, you know, I'm always able to differentiate between you know, desiring somebody and loving somebody. Mm -hmm. And I said to Christy and Megan before that, I am not ashamed to admit that I like to look at, you know, good looking guys. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> but when I'm emotionally um, attached to somebody and when the guy I like is around me, then I don't have any more desire to look at anyone else. Mm -hmm. And when he's away, then that desire come up again. So I always able to tell, you know, I I desire someone, but that doesn't mean I love him. Mm -hmm. So they, for Lily, so when you figure, when you find out that you are a polyamorous woman, and how would you differentiate between, you know, you 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 just want someone, or and or you and you love that person. Uh, so do you mean because you're allowing yourself to love multiple people, how do you tell whether you just like them or love them? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so yeah, I, I, I'm I'm curious, you know, like how you differentiate between, you know, wanting somebody sexually and you know, actually loving that person. The exact same that way person. that that you do in monogamy, it's yeah. the exact same thing. You go out on dates with them, you spend time with them, you're enjoying their company, you're attracted to them physically, and at some point you actually find yourself having those feelings of being in love with them. It's the exact same thing as monogamy, except it's happening in more than one relationship at the same time. More than one aspect of your life. Yeah, yeah. I, I, maybe I'm reading into it, but what I almost hear in your question is perhaps the assumption that uh, you would love one person and that you might sort of fool around with another on the side. Uh, which is a, a thing and you know one of the things we kind of put labels to just now but uh, Min, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seems like you're suggesting that you know How do you know which is the one that you love is that kind of part of, of maybe how you're seeing it? Well, I mean I I'm sort of feel like I guess it's for my um, I only know about my own psyche. So mm -hmm. the thing is like I never uh, confuse between, you know, I am physically attracted to somebody and loving that person. I mean, I, I, I'm able to have sex with people, um, many people, but that doesn't mean I will love them all. So I guess that's why I'm trying to understand like how that fit, how that um, different in a polyamorous person. Mm. I, I th I'm not sure it's really I guess I, different. I'm, 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 I, it's not. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I think I'm sorry, the, Megan. Mm -hmm. I yeah, yeah. It's it just like it, 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 I guess because the term that I hear like um, the term primary partner. So does that mean that the the other partner like does it mean you love them a bit less or more or how does it work? Um, you know, when you have more than one partner, then does it mean the love at the less lesser level or well if you have multiple yeah. children do you love one of them less or more yeah he he brings up a, a good question though i mean what where does that term primary or secondary mm -hmm. partner mm -hmm. or yeah. sort of uh poly hierarchy uh come from yeah. and i think for a lot of folks it is a way of sort of preserving an existing relationship mm -hmm. when they first open up there's this sort of fear that the you'll lose what you have yeah, yeah. The, and as you're like wanting to take in more love more affection more people more experiences you're really guarded and afraid of losing that precious thing that you started off with mm -hmm. and you know that that can be dangerous with anything hold on to a relationship too tightly but uh 
what we're talking about with those particular terms, men, are specifically negotiated types of relationships in which people, hopefully not from mm-hmm. a coercive or fearful standpoint, have agreed that, you know, this is kind of my main relationship. This is who I live with. This is who I love. This is who I might be married to or that our life functions in a lot of ways like a married couple. And maybe we see other people, but we don't necessarily spend the night. We don't necessarily have kids together. We don't necessarily have these other things. Uh, And that is one way of having a relationship. That is one way of negotiating the type of affection that you want and the type of way that you want to experience love with one person, two people, three people, four people. And I I definitely think we need to clarify that there are so many different types, different ways of being poly. Mm -hmm. We talk about this in the poly community all the time because one of the aspects of beginning to date a new person is trying to figure out whether their type of poly will mesh with your type of poly. Yeah. And there are so many tiny shades of it. My preference is usually for what's called kitchen table poly. Mm -hmm. Kitchen table poly is where everybody is pretty close friends with everybody. Um, It doesn't always work that way in my Mm -hmm. world. But, uh, for example, uh, one of my partners has a wife and uh, two other girlfriends besides me. And um, we are ridiculously close as a polycule, (sighs) very close. Um, uh, His wife and I are very close friends and really enjoy each other's company. The other two girlfriends uh, I've become very, very intimate friends with. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, that works very well. Now, there are lots of other people who like to be friendly uh, with their with their metamors, metamors, what you call your partners, other partners, uh, but they don't necessarily need to be best friends and go get their nails done together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had uh, my my other partner has had partners that I, you know, know a little, but haven't become best best friends with. Uh, so it's all sort of just going to be natural affinity. Uh, I have become mm. really really close friends with some of them. Uh, and that's just part of the way my poly works, but it can be very different with different people. Everybody does it a little bit differently. In terms of the how do you know who you love, you just do. You just love them or you don't love them or, you know. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know, have a problem with uh, – lots of people have relationships that are way more casual than how I do it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make them less poly. I'm just kind of intense that way. <laughs> and I, I would so, have... Sorry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. You, you say first. Oh. oh, yeah. I was just going to say, in the same way that you know when you have feelings toward another person that is more than just yeah. lust, that's uh, an emotional connection. And keeping in mind that m- most of the time those uh, emotional connections take time. So it starts off as infatuation and attraction and then eventually could turn into love. And by that point, usually you know. And we're always kind of guessing and there are always things that get in the way of understanding that. You know, if you feel desperate to be in love, you can talk yourself into thinking you're in love with somebody that you clearly don't belong with. So the best way, I think, to to set yourself up to be able to know uh, if we're answering that question, maybe apart from the poly side of things, is just making sure that you're in a place where you are able to, in a not forced, non-coercive way, be open and welcoming and accepting of love. Because not everybody is there all of the time. So making sure that you're taking care of your emotional needs, that you are doing everything you can to care for yourself, and that you're not viewing this relationship, that relationship, all these relationships as your lifeline, you know, not coming at it from a place of desperation, but of uh, already feeling full, you know, even if you're interested or curious, because you can nurture curiosity, but not if you're desperate and starving. And then you'll just take the first thing that comes your way. Um, So, uh, Chrissy and Lily, if I understand you correctly, it, even if, let's say, if you have more than one partner, but you usually with one partner at a, a specific time, right? And then you with another one, you don't, you don't, you're not with 
all of them at the same time, right? I would say that's typical, but I would say that that's f far from the only way of going about it. You know, in addition, everybody to, does poly their own way. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the beautiful things when we talk about consensual non-monogamy. We're talking about literally everything that's not monogamy. So that's a very big tent with a lot of weird shit Options. going on underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, I would say that there are beautiful triadic, quadratic, other Greek suffixes. <laughs> Polycules. Yeah, there are these elaborate <laughs> relationships and group marriages and people who are maybe, maybe four people that are only together with one another and are completely closed, closed off yeah, yeah, from everybody else. And that's their relationship. And they very often are spending, you know, two at a time, three at a time, four at a time romantically or just in daily living, you know. Uh, but that's true of any family of any sort. Everybody is sort of mixing and matching in these different things. That's not how everybody does it. That's maybe a, a beautiful and select few. Uh, but it's definitely a, a viable choice to do it one way or the other. Well, yeah. So uh, many many years ago, when when I watch um, a show from Spain, it it portrayed this woman who were in love, who was in love with two guys, mm -hmm. and she she had to have sex with both of them at the same time. Otherwise, missing one of them would be incomplete for her, and they. They, they were totally in love with her too. Mm -hmm. But of course, they're not in love with each other. And I guess that's the only example of, I guess, I, at that time, I didn't really know the term polyamory, but mm -hmm. when I hear people describe it, that's what I picture. I mean, that's, now, that's one, that's the it, classic V model. Uh, you can get down and deep and dirty into all of the, the glossary and the yeah. uh, lexicon of polyamory. Reason. Yeah, uh, well, a triad is uh, all three people are in a relationship with mm -hmm. each other. A V is there's the fulcrum and the two people who are in relationship with, with the, the person. One. Right, and and he's saying center. that the, the two men were not connected to one another. Yeah, uh, but they were so, both connected to the woman. Right, right. and so that's a V. We call that a yeah. V typically, but mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways to do it. I think that the biggest takeaway is that this is all about feeling comfortable and happy and encouraged to negotiate your relationship. And I would really think that that's a great lesson for monogamous folks to take back to their marriages, to take back to their first dates. What do you want out of this relationship? There's not a right answer to that. There's not this, you know, biblical model definition of marriage that we don't find in the Bible, uh, but that we find pervasive in our culture is one way of being, not the only way, and perhaps not the best way for you. Yeah. Yeah, so when you, yeah, so the the the, the, the question I, I told us call screener is like, like for in your case, Christy, then mm -hmm. like when you, do you have ever had to think about your wedding vow? You know, because when before you realize that you were probably amorous, you, you take the wedding vow that say, you know, I will promise to love you, mm -hmm. et cetera, a sickness in hell, you know, yeah, on, I, on. I get nervous and, when and I go to a wedding you? and they say, uh, you know, one man, one woman together forever. Forsaking all others. Forsaking yeah. all yeah. others. <laughs> those, That's a tough one. Those are all terms that I would, those are vows I am not able, willing, interested in making. Uh, Again. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair statement. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I made those out of a place of fear and I, you know, have some regret about uh, agreeing to that and making those promises. And those are things that everybody is sorting out as we, you know, barrel through life. Uh, but in terms of, you know, wedding vows, I mean, as somebody who's writing one, I don't know if you want to jump in, but I would say that just like every other part of this, you don't actually have to read the same vows that the Catholic Church has tried to make everybody read. No. You get to make right the commitments own. and promises that you want to make. Yeah, absolutely. And in in the poly world, um, it's there are such things as m multiple spouses mm -hmm. because people sometimes do have that level of commitment. Um, the way that it gets handled, obviously, it's not legal in this country. Mm -hmm. So... 
It's not going to be something that the IRS is a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, in a, in a normal, you know, usual monogamous marriage, how much of what defines it as a marriage is your tax return? Mm. Right. Right. So yeah. that's a very small Ceremonial. little part. Right. The rest of it is how do you feel about each other? And so in the poly world, the way that that's handled is with a type of ceremony called hand fasting. Mm. Um, and I, I know couples, well, throuples or <laughs> <laughs> multiple variations. Um, uh, for example, I, I have some friends uh, where uh, there's a husband and a wife who had been together a long time. They've got uh, kids. Uh, they own property together. And, but it was a polyamorous open marriage and uh, they both had other partners as mm -hmm. well. Eventually, the wife found a partner that she uh, became such an important relationship to her and she was spending 50% of her time at his house and 50% of her time with her husband. And the guys were friends, really good friends. Mm -hmm. Eventually, what happened was um, the husband acted as officiant at Aww. the hand fasting for the boyfriend and the wife, oh, and now they're all married. Uh, the guy's not to each other, but uh, both right. to her. And um, Again, that V model. That V model, and then it became practical to sell one of the houses, and they all live together. But, um, you know, the guys remain very dear friends, but they're not in romantic or sexual relationship to each other. Right. They are to her. Right. And she is married to both of them for all intents, intents and purposes of, yeah. except for... Joint tax returns. Joint tax returns, exactly. So, Min, to wrap it up, I think the answer to your question of what vows do polyamorous people make to one another, the answer would be, whatever the hell they want to promise one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let that be true of all of your relationships, whether it's with an individual, whether it's with a couple or a throuple, bigger, bigger, bigger. The thing that we really owe one another is the thing that we promise to one another. Mm -hmm. So make the promises that you feel good about making without being coerced and uh, live your best life. And we hope um, that explanation helped a little. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I just have one more question, quick question for you. Um, so for Christy and Lily, when you are in a polyamorous um, relationship, do you tend to hurt less with the, you know, when you're heartbroken because like, like one partner, I say you break it off with that person and do you feel like the, the missing piece is less intense compared to when you are in a, mon in a monogamous um, relationship? You know, like people say, you invest all the egg in, in one bag, and then when that bag is gone, you, you don't have anything. Is, is that how... That's a good is that, question. Uh, um, to you, or you... <laughs> I, I've certainly been through that. Um, I still feel breakups just as, oh, incredibly, oh, mm -hmm. horribly mm -hmm. painful. The only thing that changes there is that um, you have a support system mm. that is... A shoulder to cry on. Yeah, and I mean, you would anyway if you had very close friends and like that, but having uh, the intimacy of another partner to be there when you're really struggling is somewhat soothing. It doesn't mean that you're not feeling the pain. It, oh, it still hurts. I, I liken it to somebody going through a breakup who has a really shit family that they're not close to and they don't have a good group of friends. That breakup is going to feel one way. That exact same person who loves that other person just as much, the breakup is just as hard, but maybe they have a great group of friends around them. Maybe they have a really understanding boss and they're able to take some time off. Maybe their family is like so concerned and supportive and they are able to move on in a much happier, healthier way with all that extra support. Same with polyamory. The breakup is still the breakup. Mm. Whether it's a easy breakup, we went out three times, he turned out to be a dick. No problem. <laughs> See you later. Uh, or whether it was like a long-standing, deeply connected emotional uh, struggle, and that's a difficult thing. It's going to be the same experience. The only difference is all of the love around you. That and here's the, the thought that I'm kind of bouncing around on is um, the, the partner who has with whom one has broken up is not replaceable by Absolutely. the other partner. Yeah, they're Partners not interchangeable. Are not interchangeable in any way. So it's not like, oh, well, I've still got one and therefore, no, I'm still missing that one. Mm -hmm. Right, because that they are a unique piece. Mm -hmm. 